okay? Bedtime MMA, I'm calling you out. I know what you're doing. Don't even play. Don't even fuck around. All right, listen. So, what it do, Bedtime Crew? Hey, man, listen, let me start that off. You know, let me get the intro, and I know you thought it was, wasn't going to happen, but it's here. Lucas Tracy, Flukas Glazy, called me out and said that Dustin Poirier, Benoit saint Denis is not a close fight. I've just watched this video over. He's talking about Benoit saint Denis is very similar to Charles Oliveira. Poirier's not hungry. He's not training hard. He's training in his backyard. You know, what about the Khabib fight? What about the Michael Chandler fight? I'm here to debunk all of that. And I'm here to sort out Flukas Glazer. I'm here to put my boy in his place. We've had these little scuffles in the past. You know, I'm about to let go of Steve Ursag left hook on him, you know, because I tried to tell him to pick the goat Rosen strike. He didn't listen. He picked the blobby blobster, Shamil Gaziev. I tried to tell him to pick Marab over Piotr Jan. He didn't listen. I tried to tell him to pick Jones over Gan. He didn't listen. So today I'm hoping that I can help my boy Lucas out, get him to believe the truth that this is not a whitewash. This is not a Benoit saint Denis smokes Dustin Poirier. You can pick Benoit saint Denis, but this video is ridiculous. This is a joke, all right? Let's start off with the first thing that he talked about in this video. Uh, I'm not going to play the whole thing, but earlier on in the video, he's talking about Dustin Poirier is not training hard. He's training in his backyard. Why do you make faces like this? You look animated, but he's like, oh, Poirier is training in his backyard, all right? Dustin Poirier is training with Mateus Gamrot, dude. He's training with the same team that prepared him to be, you know, able to beat Michael Chandler, out grapple him, finish him late in that fight. Same team that helped him put up great takedown defense in his fights. And I'll talk about that later. The numbers are there to prove what I'm saying is true. Unlike Lucas Tracy talking about, oh, well, Poirier is just not hungry, man. He's just not a hungry, hungry man. He's not bringing up any evidence. He's not bringing up any fight footage. I'm here to give you some real information. All right, dude. So that's number one. Poirier ain't hungry, bro. He shaved his fucking head, dude. He's training with the GOAT, Mateus Scamrock, who's a better fighter than, than Benoit St. Denis at this point in his career. He's higher ranked. He's beat good competition. He is a very similar matchup. Even if you don't think Mateus Scamrock is very good, he is very similar. And he is a wizard in the grappling. You have to give him that. So this is a good look for Dustin Poirier. And that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. Another thing that Lucas Tracy mentions is he's talking about the, oh, what about the Khabib fight? He was hungry in the Khabib fight. You know, you're just trying to say pump the brakes on Benoit saint Denis. You don't actually think Poirier is going to win. The logical choice is Benoit saint Denis. Let's talk about logic. Let's talk about statistics. Like, I'm Ben Shapiro. Trust. All right, dude. Let's talk about the statistics, all right? Logically, Benoit saint Denis is the right pick. So, Benoit saint Denis is the grappler, right? You said this is a grappler-striker matchup, right? But he, I love in the video, he goes, Benoit's a marauder on the feet. All right, Joe Rogan. I know what that means. That means he's shit on the feet, but you just don't want to say that there's a chance he gets chinned. But listen, the numbers speak for themselves. Marauder on the feet. Same amount strikes absorbed as he gets landed. You know what I'm saying? He's getting hit as much as he's hitting. He's giving one to take one. Against Dustin Poirier, is that a good idea? A guy with very good defense. I mean, look at the numbers. 45% significant strike defense. Below average. 54%. Strike defense. That's fucking swapped if you don't know how numbers work. Again, look at the difference in these numbers as well. Takedown defense, 64%. Oh, man, what about the Khabib fight? What about the Oliveira fight? He got out grappled in those fights. What about Michael Chandler? Charles Oliveira, 0 for 6 on takedowns. Was struggling in that fight, dude. Was getting pieced the fuck up in that fight. And he talks about how Poirier gassed out in that fight. That was due to knees to the body from Charles Oliveira. If you guys remember that, knees to the body were a very big part of his game plan. If, and if Benoit uses those, that is a good idea. That may have an impact on Dustin Poirier. But I just don't see that happening with a guy that's trained for his last fight at Elevation. Right? That's had five round fights back to back to back to back to back. Went to war with Dan Hooker, who is another kind of, you know, hard kicker that likes to mix in takedowns. Obviously not comparing him to Benoit St. Denis. I'm just saying that's a high level opponent that he beat over five rounds. Right? Eddie Alvarez, another high output wrestler with power. 0 for 3 on takedowns. Michael Chandler, 3 for 7 on takedowns. Got submitted. So you can point to that and talk about the straight punches of Chandler hurting Poirier. That's pretty fair. But at the same time, Poirier dropped him in round one. The second round was completely grappling, just laying in the guard. Benoit saint Denis is going to be more active, activating a scramble. That's going to benefit Dustin Poirier. The more that they scramble, the more likely Poirier is to find something good, especially over five rounds. 
We're talking about a jump here for Benoit St. Denis. Again, look at these numbers. A jump for Benoit St. Denis from Matt Frivola, who did take down Benoit St. Denis, by the way, who ran into a head kick, literally ran into it with little like twinkle toes out of the clinch, which just, you know, you're asking to be head kicked running away with your hands down, right? I'm not taking away that win from Benoit. I'm just saying, put the highlight into context. We are jumping from Benoit St. Denis to Dustin fucking Poirier. And for Lucas Tracy to get on this video, dude, and be like, it's not going to be close. The logical choice is, is Benoit St. Denis. My brother, you picked Poirier against Justin Gaethje his last fight. You literally fucking picked Justin Gaethje less than a year ago. You, you yourself saw Poirier good enough to beat Justin fucking Gaethje, who again is more powerful, proven, more accurate, right? More patient than Benoit Saint-Denis, improved everywhere over his career, especially in that last fight. You thought Poirier was going to beat him, and now you're switching up completely. So if I'm the pump the brakes guy, what does that make you? You're the flip-flop guy, bro. You just changed up your whole fucking opinion on Dustin Poirier because he sold your fucking parlay, bro. I've been there, dude. But let's be fucking real here, man. I'm not being a pump the brakes guy. I'm not going against the logical pick. I'm looking at both of these fighters and saying, this is the guy who can stuff takedowns from Charles Oliveira and Michael Chandler and Eddie Alvarez and Khabib, right? This is a guy who can knock out Conor McGregor standing. And you're talking about him getting steamrolled by a guy who got a crazy head kick against Matt Frivola. Very impressive. But otherwise, who has this man beat? He has beat Ishmael Bonfim. Oh my fucking God, call the cops. You know, who else? Tiago Moises. Oh my God, call the cops, dude. You know what I'm saying, man? He got pieced the fuck up by Elizu Dos Santos, bro. And I know that's at welterweight. I know that's short notice, but still. I mean, if we're taking away context from all these fights, we're just talking about the outcomes. Your boy got pieced the fuck up by a welterweight that's not even ranked. And Dustin Poirier is a great boxer. Benoit saint Denis, you look at his numbers and you watch him fight. This man does not move his fucking head. Benoit saint Denis does not move his head. That is a fact. If you have watched Benoit saint Denis fight, you know this man does not move his head. He is, a, he is a marauder. I will give you that. But a marauder does not move his head. He comes forward. He throws big kicks. Dustin Poirier is good at checking kicks. He's good at slipping, especially early on. He gets in a good rhythm. Once he starts pulling up the shorts, fixing the hair, you're cooked. You're cooked, brother. And again, the last thing I want to talk about with this fight, I mean, I've already talked about how you look at the numbers. Dustin Poirier has better defense, better, you know, similar takedown defense numbers against way better competition, which gives me confidence that he can stuff takedowns from this guy. Benoit St. Denis gets hit a lot, has been tagged the fuck up in the boxing, has a granite chin. I'm going to give him some respects there, right? But we haven't seen him go five rounds. We haven't seen him against the level of competition that Poirier is. And he's talking about, oh, Poirier's 35, man. He's, you know, he's contemplating retirement. He pulls up this quote right here. Every fight could be. Think about what he's actually saying here. This is not a ridiculous thing to say. This is not a Henry Cejudo. Guys, I'm going to retire, dude. I'm going to retire, man. I'm seriously, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to retire, you guys. This is not that at all. This is every fight could be my last fight. He's saying if I get knocked the fuck out, of course, I'm going to consider retirement. I'm 35. He's not saying, oh, yeah, bro, I'm, I'm nearing retirement. He's saying oh, it could be my last fight or it could, it could not be, right? So I feel like Lucas Tracy has crafted this entire narrative in his head because he's, he's come so far with Benoit Saint. This is what I genuinely think it is. This man has dropped, what, three videos on Benoit Saint Denise talking about he's the next Khabib, comparing him to Charles Oliveira in this video, comparing him to Conor McGregor. He's come too far. He can't turn back now. I've been there, bro. I've been there. I've dropped those videos on Blades and been like, fuck, I feel like Pavlovich is going to win, but I can't turn back. It's too... Bro, I will give you one chance to get out of this, Lucas. I will give you one chance to comment on this video and say, bedtime, you were right, before I give you that Steve Ursegg left hook. All right, dude? Um, I will give you one chance to change your mind. But seriously, think about this. He's stuffing takedowns off Charles. He's stuffing takedowns off Eddie. He's out. He's submitting Michael Chandler and dropped him badly, Right? Very similar fighting style from Chandler to BSD in this last fight. He was throwing kicks and he was spamming takedowns and Dustin Poirier beat him and looked like shit and still beat him. And this is now bold, motivated Poirier who's never lost two in a row, by the way. Let's remember that he's never lost two in a row. So that's another reason 
why I'm picking him. But again, this is an illogical pick, man. I'm just trying to pump the brakes on Benoit St. Denis, you know? Obviously, once you beat Matt Frivola, you can beat Dustin Poirier. That's why I'm picking Terrence McKinney to beat Dustin Poirier in his next fight, guys. That's the truth here. But... All jokes aside, that is my breakdown. That is my analysis of this fight. I think Dustin Poirier's boxing is going to catch up to Benoit St. Denis. I think he's going to be able to stuff enough takedowns. But he's going to drag him into round three, round four. It's going to be a war. That's a bar right there. I just rhymed three lines in a row. Bars. But I do think it will be a close fight. And again, I'm not saying Benoit St. Denis has no chance. Obviously, he is a powerful guy. Obviously, if there was ever a time for Poirier to lose two in a row, it would be right now. At his oldest, at his, coming off a KO loss. It makes sense. But what I'm saying is, Lucas Tracy, I'm not pumping the brakes on Benoit. I'm pumping the brakes on you. The glazing, the unlicensed dick riding, it's fucking out of hand, dude. And you know it is, bro. You know it is, dude. So think about that shit before you keep going. All right. I think Poirier is going to TKO him. Round three, round four. I see this fight being very similar to the Justin Gaethje fight, the first one that they had, where Gaethje's landing these hard leg kicks. Poirier lands some big boxing combos. Again and again and again until, you know, Poirier just puts something on Benoit, hurts him, TKOs him up against the fence late in the fight. Both of them are covered in blood. It's an absolute war. The crowd's going crazy. Fight of the month contender, maybe a fight of the year contender. I think it's going to be a great fight. I do think Benoit St. Denis can do it. But the last thing I want to mention is when we're talking about what's the logical pick, what's the statistical pick, what's the smart pick, right? Because that's what you care about so much. You really care about these picks a lot, I can tell. Okay, you do a lot of research, but... Here's one thing I want you to remember if you didn't research it, bro. Dustin Poirier has been ranked longer than Benoit St. Denis has been training MMA. And he has been fighting elite competition the entire fucking time. He is not like these other guys that are picking and choosing, that are taking two years layoff every, every time they fight. This guy's been active. He's been fighting the best in the world. He's been at the top of the lightweight division for longer than Benoit St. Denis has literally been training MMA. That's facts. That's literally a factual statistic, bro. So don't tell me that this is a not a, a, a smart pick or that I'm, I'm just trying to pump the brakes on Benoit St. Denis. I'm trying to pump the brakes on your glazing, bro. You're going glaze overdrive. You're going to drown Benoit St. Denis. But listen, bro, that's my thoughts on this fight. Give me Poirier by round three, round four TKO. Let me know what you guys think of this fight down below. What do you think is going to happen? Do you agree with me? Do you agree with Lucas? Drop your comments in the, in, uh, in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like. Subscribe to the channel at 20,000. I'm going to be doing the bedtime MMA impressions tier list, including, you know, bad, bad times a fucking scumbag, dude. Lucas is a fucking scumbag, dude. You know what he fucking did, right? And Henry Cejudo, all the guys. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing full 299 predictions this week, as well as a Sean O'Malley Cheeto Vera breakdown. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Go follow me on Instagram at Bedtime MMA as well. You can see all my picks. I've been going crazy with the picks lately, but appreciate all the support, you guys. See you in the next video. Goodbye.